Friends with Us podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And something, something grim dark. But before we talk about that, if you enjoy today's episode and you want to support the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all of our posters in crispy HD digital format, which, by the way, we have a new poster to show to Bricky today. It is a Detective Ridiculous poster. And Bricky, are you ready for what will probably become your favorite poster ever? Uh, the, 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 hyper, the hyperbolic statements here is not, it's not helping me one bit. I don't think it's actually hyperbolic, but Shy, show it to him. All right, let's see it. It's a Detective Ridiculous one. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's the best poster we've launched I, right? I told That's nothing so hy- good. nothing hyperbolic about it. It is uh, Ned Kelly, the become ungovernable poster. Oh, so that's why Shy asked me for the duck image earlier. <laughs> Shy just like, do you still have the become ungovernable duck? And this is why. This Wait, is why. <laughs> this is great. That is a fly poster. That is a really, really dope poster. I love Love right. it. The, that's like a top five for me. I really yeah. like it. Mm-hmm. And also, Bricky, do you ship posters to Australia by any chance? Because I think we might have a few fans that might want to get their hands on it I, over there. I ab- I absolutely do. Um, and I, <laughs> the shipping is is probably going to be a bit much because everything to Australia has some shipping cost issues. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but this but one is. Ooh. <laughs> it is gonna go, no doubt. Um, okay, so. Uh yeah, no, I mean we ship we ship to every country except for, I think right now it's like it's like Ukraine, North Korea, I think Israel, and somewhere else because of you know ah because reasons because because current times yes yeah yeah um, yeah because of reasons yeah not my choice but that's the way the post office works yeah yeah um yep, but god, but but goddamn you can get that poster down at orchid eight dot com link in the description I will have it up in time for this episode. Become ungovernable. Become ungovernable. You're you're never gonna be sure of if you're gonna like a poster or not because you know I sometimes really don't. sometimes it's one that you actually love like this, and other times it's you know big boo, big hipped watchers. Uh, which yeah, you, which you also like. I, I I made clear my my personal sexual <laughs> preferences. I did not say I liked it. You sh- you made it abundantly clear. Yeah. Abundantly, I'm gonna go abundantly. play abundantly. I'm gonna go play a real character like who, who has Saga who, who, Anderson. Who has who has big hips in a in a video game? Milia Rage in Guilty Gear Strive. Ooh, nice choice. I thought you were gonna say Bridget for a second. That is not brisket. Does not have that <laughs> brisket for the biscuit. Oh no, I'm not gonna brisket at all. I know brisket. I hate fighting brisket. She's so infuriating. Literally haven't played Guilty Gear Strive since she came out. That is that is perfectly fine. The game Happy Chaos ruined Guilty Gear Strive. Don't <laughs> don't correct me, viewers. <laughs> Didn't Happy Chaos a uh, Happy uh, Chaos player win Evo last year? Yeah, Luffin. It, yeah, it was Luffin. And it, it Luffin. Oh, I was so close. It it wasn't. It like wasn't even. It, it didn't it was, drop around. I it don't wasn't think. even a contest. It was. It was just like a massacre. Speaking of happy chaos, that's what this episode has descended into. Because this isn't a fighting game podcast. It's a forty k podcast. Yeah, it is a forty k podcast. And uh, Shy has provided to me a quote for today's episode because I couldn't find one. Um, okay, and I, I think you're just gonna get it. But you know what? We'll do it anyway because a quote is a. It's part of our thing. Okay. Though mankind is at the brink of this great apotheosis, you must be ever (laughs) vigilant for the stillborn harbingers of this change. Where you seek the pure and strong, there too will you find the impure and weak. Where you find but one worthy of life, you will also find a million twisted, deformed monstrosities for whom death by your hand is a mercy. Therefore, look first for the mutant, for he may never hide his sin from you, and in his midst there will be revealed to you that which you seek. But be ever vigilant, for even should you find one with the gift, only one in a thousand will be strong enough to resist, 
the perils of the Empyrean and be allowed to live. Jesus! I mean, this sounds like some abhuman shit. Like, some muty abhuman shit. I just, I don't know what specifically... Uh, I, I mean, maybe, maybe like a part of me was thinking maybe blanks because it's like, oh yeah, they're super rare and ooh, mercy, death is mercy. But I'm gonna go with some abhuman, muty uh, nonsense. Uh, you get half points. Oh, you get. You so get what is half. it? Uh, uh, we're, we're so okay. Um, you know, a couple episodes ago, we did like servitors, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like a general like. You know, we're we're uh, a, we are a pod. We are a foot in the door podcast. We are a a new people getting into the hobby or just very very casual enjoyers. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so I, it feels a little silly that we've never actually done an episode on something we reference all the time, which is psychers. Oh, it's just oh man, I was just thinking too hard about it. Yeah, a, a little bit. It's just a psyker episode. We are oh, just, just talking, psychers. Just talking about psychers. That's true, because like, yeah, psychers are always like, uh, yeah, like one in a one in a million will be one that you can use because all the rest of them deserve nothing but death because they're crazy and they're talking in their sleep and they're wandering around blowing people's heads up. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and and that's why you get half points because psychers are technically are mutants. mutants. Yeah, yeah. That's so fair. it makes sense. Um, I, I must say, when I was looking for quotes, I, I found this one. Um, uh, it was it was quotes from the Inquisition, and since you know certain members of the Inquisition are psychers and everything, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I, I I caught one that I thought was really funny, uh, and it has nothing to do with psychers, but it just it just grabbed me. It said, "I'm sure most of the men in the galaxy are familiar with the sinking feeling that accompanies the words. Do you think you could do me a little favor, darling?" But when the woman asking the question is an inquisitor, it's even less wise than usual to say no. Yeah, <laughs> that's that is that is an accurate quote. That is so, definitely don't want to say no to either one. But yeah, it's a it's a quote from uh, Commissar Caiaphas Cain. Oh, fair. Because, of fair, course. Fair. Uh, um, also, Shy has a wall of text. Do you want to read it or should I? Yeah, you go ahead. I do too much talking already. That's fair. That's fair. Also, note on our previous episode, which relates to this one, regarding sisters and the warp. GW apparently started recently separating faith and other powers from the warp. People using magic powers outside of warp presence happened in some of the recent books, like one of the characters in The End and the Death, who later becomes one of the first Imperial Saints, uses seemingly psyker powers while being locked in Blackstone Prison despite not being a psyker purely by using faith. And in current Warhammer RPG books, Psyker powers and Zealot powers are separate and require different stats. So presumably now Catan, Reality Bending, Saints, and Faith Magic, Orc Wah powers, and so on are all separate from the Warp Sorcery. So huh. that is an interesting point to mention because I was going to talk a bit about the Orc Wah today and how that mm-hmm. might pertain to something similar. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll get there in a moment. It's actually good that Shai brought that up because that's a good, a good topic for today. So, a psyker. You normally a play psychers when you play games, don't you? Oh, yeah, I do. I guess I do usually gravitate towards the psyker. Like in uh, Dark Tide, I, I love playing the psyker. Even before the bees. The bees. I was playing a psyker even before the bees, all right? The, um... Uh, do you normally play like battle mages or like like you know like DPS mages in games? Yeah, I do because they are. Uh, I- I'm too stupid to be the tank leading the party, and I am far too unreliable to be the healer. That's fair. It's just just number go up. <laughs> yeah, n- push button number go. <laughs> yep. All right, that's me. That works. That works. Um, anywho, a psyker is obviously a person who, and, and if we're taking the literal wiki definition right here, it's the ability to use psychic powers. Um, now, <laughs> psychic powers are commonly, normally taken from the warp, but we'll talk about the rest in a bit. Um, mm-hmm. But a psyker, for the most part, is, at least in terms of the human race, a genetic mutation. Um, it normally is not present in a physical attribute but it certainly can be at times Uh, for example 
if we you were doing something along the lines of, say, like an astropath or not an astropath, a navigator, for example. Oh, the third eye, right? The third eye, exactly. And and depending on the book you read, they might look like just regular humans with a third eye, like the Night Lords trilogy, or like uh, lanky, pale, clawed <laughs> individuals like in the Rogue Trader video game, like um, yep. Cassia. Yep. Cassia's um, clawed? Yeah, look at her fingers. Oh my god, she is. I never really noticed that. Yeah, she's she's a, she's a weirdo, and and that's kind of you know part of the whole the whole thing. Have you gotten um, your statue of her yet? No, they they were having. Um, I actually just saw an update. They were having shipping uh, issues because of the whole everything going on up there. Oh right, okay. I, I think the studio is Croatian, and I don't know if it's like there's problems. I don't know. I don't remember. <clears throat> okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. Um, but regardless, yeah, the statue does sidetrack. Yeah. Um, but uh, so for the most part, though, the genetic mutation that allows a being to use psychic powers seems to come from the brain itself. It it is in the brain, and so unless you do some kind of, you know, messing around scanning of the brain or another psyker, you really can't tell if someone is a psyker or not, just huh. from like a cursory glance at their body. Oh, okay. Well, wasn't it like if you're around a psyker, you or is it just blanks that you feel uneasy around, and not just psychers in general? It depends on one how trained the psyker is, two how powerful they are, and three. Well, okay, a blank you'll feel terrible around, regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blanks make you feel like sick and nauseous and uneasy and just you know shivers down your spine. I wasn't sure if like psychers were the same way or. It, what you said, like a, a well-trained psyker can just like hide that. Yeah, like let's take uh, Inquisitor Eisenhorn for example. You know, he just kind of no, goes no. around the world and doesn't really care. Yeah, um, that's true. But, you know, because he he is a very powerful psyker, but he he is has extreme control over yeah. everything he has. Um, yeah, not the where, most powerful psyker, but pretty strong. Right. Whereas someone uh, like. Example, at the end of the Gaunt's Ghosts book, there was that little flashback where Gaunt met with the Psyker, who basically was just the exorcist girl and started climbing around <laughs> the ceiling and stuff. Yeah. Um, like, then you can have issues like that where the whole room becomes cold and then, like, it's just nightmarish. Oh, yeah, it's awful, awful. There are degrees wow, she, of... Yeah, she really was the exorcist girl. I forgot all about her. Yeah, she's all twisty and stuff. It was awful. Yeah. Yep. Um, so there, there are tons of various uh, types of psychers, and it depends also where you find them. You'll have your Inquisitor psyker, maybe your Space Marine librarian, who is a mm-hmm. whole new world. But then you might just have the, the back of the class weird kid reaching in his backpack <laughs> in, in your hive city. And oh. he's, just, he's just a bit weird, but in reality, he's afflicted by being a psyker and has never mm-hmm. had proper training. What is that picture Shy just posted? That looks like some chaos nonsense, but I'm assuming it's not. My brother, he has the chaos star on his chest. Oh, I didn't zoom in on it. I on, I only saw the minimizer. Okay, yeah, he does have the he did, he literally has that on his. On that his that's chest. like a okay. a psycho right. cultist that's just gone okay. crazy, you know, a cultist. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. I, I was like, there's no way that guy is not heretical as hell. There's no way that is an Imperium sanctioned unit <laughs> with isn't the it, skulls on the pylons on his back. Isn't it kind of ironic though that like. Those two skulls in the pylons probably would be totally like if you just said they were servo skulls, you just gave them like two red eye lenses, it would be an <laughs> Imperium thing. Yeah, it'd be totally normal. No one would bat an eye, but yeah. Um actually but, now that you say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anywho, it is a genetic mutation to become a psyker. Um for the most part, it was a little, a little bit of this needs citation here. Um okay. but it's assumed that the earliest human psychers were what we would refer to as old school, like shamans and the like. Ah, um, gotcha. They performing were, rituals and talking to the voices in their heads that they claimed were God. And yeah, kind of like, like ima- imagine all of the, the people nowadays with, they have, you know, we got a ton of religions on earth right now. We can just assume that some of them that we might think are like cranks might actually be just psychic. psychic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they might actually be psychers. Sure. So it's a, you know, it's, but it's very uncommon. Um, yeah, naturally. And, and, you know, obviously there, we don't have the, 
we can't fully encapsulate it because we haven't had a demon infestation on Earth yeah. yet. You know, you know why else psychers are uncommon? Why is that? Because ten thousand of them get fed to the emperor on the daily. Actually, is it ten thousand or a thousand? One thousand. Whatever. Still, that's a lot of that's a lot of dead psychers. It's a lot less when there's a million worlds. <laughs> well, that's true. They, I, I, I keep forgetting the scope of the Imperium. Like that, millions of worlds. I keep thinking that they're like only in the like uh, uh, the the our solar system, you know, only out to Pluto or something. And it's like, no, 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 no. The millions of worlds, right? Like, M- yeah. mil- millions of worlds are a part of the Imperium. This doesn't even account for all of the worlds that have not been reintegrated into society yet. Yeah, the the amount of psychers that the Emperor eats for his daily snack is like a drop in the bucket to them, probably. Right. And, and not so, even. Uh, and so, um, you know, th- there's this old theory that like the Emperor was created by a by multiple shamans doing a ritual to become like one big being. But this oh, is like yeah. this is old lore. And, and, like th- this is <laughs> like when I was born, probably. So. Uh, oh, we we don't take this whole thing to, to for granted. Like we we don't really use this. We kind of the emperor was just there. Don't ask questions. Yeah, back um, when you landed on Plymouth Rock, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um. So, a psycho mutation then has become a bit more common uh, in humanity, specifically when the birth of Slanesh. Um. Oh, I always get this wrong. It was either right before the birth of Slanesh or the birth of Slanesh caused it it made it worse i um, gotta believe the birth of slanesh would make it a whole lot worse i i thought that it was a combination of um of the because I, I always get my timeline wrong like birth of slanesh happens which therefore causes the age of strife where everyone is cut off from each other and mm-hmm. then because of the birth of slanesh psycho mutations become even more common which causes more demons to invade worlds and horrible things to go wrong which made the age of strife even worse worse yet i mean that sounds right i mean obviously i can't say (laughs) because i'm not a warhammer historian uh, but i mean that that timeline makes sense to me Okay, so Shai seems to back up what I've said. So I, I, Let's I go. Think, I think I, I think we're right. I remember I made a I made that video going over the timeline on my channel, and I I think mm-hmm. I screw, I think I screwed that part up. So I, I I got like the thing reversed. When when Shai is willing to agree with you, you know you're probably <laughs> on the right track, right? Yeah, I I am not not looking forward to when we play Hell Divers. I'm going to be murdered. Oh man, yeah, that ooh, ooh, there is friendly fire. <laughs> um, anywho, uh, so basically, uh, they start popping up a lot more after the, or during the age of strife, causing mm-hmm. a lot of problems because they were still in their infancy. No one knew what the hell it was or what was going on, and that is a huge threat, especially with chaos being a lot more prominent now that their the Eye of Terror just was created and everything. Oh yeah, but also if you can get them under control, they're a big asset too you know because then all of the uh you can you can fight off all the crazy demons that are popping up everywhere and you know yeah so psychers are now a more prominent part of of humanity they are actually a very important part as they uh, make up the majority of interstellar communication and interstellar travel uh Mm -hmm. it is actually kind of crazy to think that if you do not have a, a psyker slash navigator on your ship you are just like dead in the warp or dead, yeah, you you're dead in space like you are st- flying blind. Yep, completely flying blind. Is um, is that just how they did space travel before psychers? Like before the birth of psychers, did they just kind of wander around and just ping stuff and just not use the warp at all? It's tough to tell because that would technically be in the golden age of humanity slash the dark age of technology. Oh, and they had such crazy tech back then. They probably didn't need psychers for anything, right? It's it's hard to tell. We're never fully given a visual into how hyper advanced humanity was. Um, though we did just talk about the super weapon debuts. <laughs> And yeah, clearly, do- we were quite strong. <laughs> yeah, the doomsday device that oops a daisy didn't know how it worked. I'm just gonna dot half of a planet out of existence with the Necrons. So yeah, uh, maybe they had a way to traverse the warp. Yeah, like you know, there are always a ton of these 
crazy things, you know? Um, yeah, Shy makes a great point. The Geller field, uh, field is also fueled by a psyker. They literally lock the psyker oh. inside and she feeds them their dreams. We should really talk about Geller Fields one episode. That, that'd be a I, great episode. I didn't realize that's how Geller Fields worked. I just thought it was some human technology that they made a little bubble that, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize you locked a psyker inside something and do some crazy dream nonsense to make a bubble safe from warp. It's it's pretty craziness. Um, wow, but uh, we'll talk about that maybe a different day. But but you know, dark yeah. age technology uh, stuff is, is how you have power discrepancies in characters in in like tabletop. You know, like Lord Solar Leontis carries around <laughs> a a dark age I think like pistol called Soul's Righteous Gaze that just like one shots right. Marines. It's crazy. <laughs> That's um, such a great name for a gun, by the way. <laughs> Soul's oh, Righteous man. Gaze. And it just one shots anything. Oof, I mean, nice. yeah, it, like nice. in game, it basically just like deletes the Space Marine. But um, nice. it's also Soul, like S O L. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, like the sun. He is yeah, praising yeah. the sun, or or well, the system of Soul, like Earth and Terra. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So obviously, uh, psychers are incredibly important to the running of humanity in general, but. Pose substantial risk. Um, <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> introducing the Adeptus Astra Telepathica. Oh um, boy, what a name. Trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it is an organization of the Adeptus Terra. Uh, one of the, the, the leader of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, I do believe, is a High Lord of Terra, I think. That would make um, sense. That would make sense. Um, and kind it, of important. It consists of two parts: the Scholastia Psychana and mm-hmm. the League of Black Ships. Oh, okay. Um, now I, it, 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 quiz time. Um, oh no! League of Black Ships. What are those? Uh, well, I would imagine it is a large fleet of ships that have been painted black. You're technically correct. <laughs> Just an armada of of black colored ships. Mm-hmm. You act, do you actually not know? Uh, if you've told me, it is one of those things that I have forgotten because you know. Okay, well you, you'll you'll know you'll be like oh when I tell you. Um, okay, it's the ships the Sisters of Silence pilot to go out and like gather psychers to be sacrificed. Oh, uh, okay. We have talked about that. I guess yes. I just didn't realize they were called black ships. That's yeah. The, the ships are the ships are black. Yes, the, they are known as the black ships. So what you're um, saying is I was right. <laughs> the, you are technically correct. The best kind. The best correct. kind. Let's go. Um, oh man, I'm batting a thousand today. Let's go. Is batting a thousand <clears throat> when you hit every ball? Yes. Uh, okay. Oh, so so having a batting average of like 300 plus, it means you hit three out of ten. Yes, that that that's why having a batting average above like three hundred is like ooh, pretty good. You having a good season, and then if you're in like the four hundred, it's like you are prolific. Oh, I'm learning. You're learning sports, sports ball. Shy, shy, can you can you put can you put the Xavier Renegade Angel part in the background here? And uh, sports, 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 sports. Although, honestly, I don't know how it is now, because I haven't actually watched baseball in probably a decade. That's fine. You just go there for the $15 hot dogs. Um, and the beer. And it's, the beer. It, it is un, to me, it is unbearable to watch baseball uh, not drunk. Like, sober? Ugh. That's fair. We'll, we'll go to a baseball game one day. Yeah, one um, day. They have a pitch count now, so it goes a lot faster. Anyway, so, uh, League of Black Ships. Uh, obviously are the Sisters of Silence, the blanks that go out, and they f- gather and just fetch psychers. Their job is psyker gathering. Um, that is their whole point. They were a lot more prominent back during the Great Crusade as like a fighting force, but kind of got relegated a bit after the heresy. Um, mm-hmm. Gilliman has brought them back. Uh, the Adeptus okay. Custodes work hand in hand. They're known as the Talons of the Emperor, which is the Custodians and Sisters of Silence together. Ooh, um, love that name. Love the Talons of the Emperor. Ooh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty dope name. Um, but the Sisters' job is Psyker Roundup. Mm-hmm. Classic. Um, and, and I assume if you find a Psyker, you take it 
no matter the cost. Like, if the parents are like, oh, no, you cannot take my son, you just, like, beat him over the head with a stick and then take the kid. Like, fu- rebelling against, rebelling against, because the sisters are silence, they're, they're, they're like, use, use the quote, Bricky. Oh, yeah, good point. I, oh, yes, this is the time for that quote. This is the time <laughs> for that quote. Yes, Let's yes. go. Let's go. What a Dean Kamen. Oh, wow. Well, he's going to segue that right off a cliff. <laughs> Please don't segue us right off a cliff. We've done that several times already this episode. I don't think we need another, uh, you know, parachuteless base jump. Ah, ah, call them what you will. Krell, sirens, or enslavers. Just one witch, unsanctioned, caused the destruction of Hive Scorpius when one of those things used her brain as a gateway to this world. Within three days... The entire hive's population was reduced to drooling mind slaves. Within three Ugh. weeks, an entire continent was at war, and all because the governor thought his family should be exempt from the psyker cull and refused to give his daughter to the black ships. Yeesh. Oh boy, yeah, you know what? <laughs> you, you take that psyker no matter what. Cause holy shit, that yeah. is that is almost worse than a chaos cultist uprising. Wow. Yeah. So enslavers, we've talked about a little bit. They are a creature of the warp. They're not like a chaos creature. They just they just live in the warp. Yeah. Um. They. That's one of the images of it. They look really weird, a little buggy. Ooh. Um, <laughs> that you're not having a good day. <laughs> no, but and you know they do what you think they would do, which is enslave, enslave you. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, for the for the most part, you don't really, you can't really tell the sisters of silence no because they're power armored, hyper trained women that are blanks and can murder you very quickly. Yeah, and um, with no no consequences either because this is their job the emperor has told them to do as such they're not going to face any consequences you're going to literally die for nothing I, i'm a little unsure if going against the sisters of silence is like it might be worse than saying no to an inquisitor because <laughs> it, i like like the sisters of silence represent like terra they they represent True. like you are being taken to die for the emperor and not doing that is yeah, sh- yeah, like you said, it, it might be worse than like saying no to an inquisitor. Because at least with inquisitors, it's like you know we've we've seen examples of corrupt inquisitors, inquisitors that are oh I'm going to work for chaos. I don't know why I did the accent there, but whatever. Um, but with the sisters, it's like well that they're, they're they're on the holy quest of Terra. They represent the emperor. Like you you're you really gonna go against that? Yeah, it's it is it is just. I'm assuming that they didn't give his uh, that he didn't give the psyker like like he like hid his daughter in this situation is what I would assume. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, it wasn't like he was like, no, sisters, I'm the governor. I'm not giving you my child. It's just he literally just hid it in a bunker somewhere. That's what I would assume would be the case um, gotcha. because I don't think the actual like puffing your chest out and saying no is really gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> against um, the sister and, and, I, and I, I assume that the sisters of silence are also uh i i, su- I think they have like orderlies and, and and serfs that help them communicate with you know the wider world uh cause right because they're, they're all because they're, they're mute. mute yeah that's right that's right or i don't think they're, they're not actually mute they take a vow of silence is is the thing they don't, oh, okay gotcha. like they're not like physically they, they it's like they're i think they, selective they, it's I think in their training, they eventually reach a point where they're like, OK, like this is where the vow of silence has occurred. It never again. Gotcha. OK. Um, but uh, anywho. Yeah, it, it, this kind of brings us back a little bit to when we talked about with the months of shame where those awful inquisitor people are <laughs> the way they are because of situations like this where one psyker destroyed like a continent. Yeah, so they're just hyper, like, no. Like, we we might be a little extreme, but there's a reason for that. We've had other extreme situations that cause just mass destruction. So it's like, better safe than sorry. So we're just going to be extreme. Yeah, so it's, yeah. you know, it's not good, but it, 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 it's, it does us service to understand. Yeah, 
It, it's um, better than the alternative. The so the black ships will take them to uh, the psychers to the second division of the Astra uh, Telepathica, which is the Scholastia Psychata. And if we are understanding our prefixes and stuff pretty well in Warhammer, um, I would assume that you'd know that would basically mean psyker school. Yeah, I figured it was like a scola for sky, scola for skikers, scola for psychers. Like Those the are the words I was looking. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, obviously, the psychers are brought in here, and they are evaluated um, mm-hmm. by their innate psychic power, their personal character, um, whether they want to be in school. Um, <laughs> what, what if the psychers like, I don't want to be in school? Do they just instantly get, like, a bolt round to the face or something? <laughs> no, they get sacrificed to the emperor. <laughs> oh, of course. Why would you worst waste a perfectly good snack? Yeah, You're exactly. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, perfect. So you're are... going to serve the emperor one way or another, kiddo. Like, ooh. so those that are deemed too weak in their personal character or in their psychic power or are too old or perhaps too dangerous and unstable, they are sacrificed to the emperor. Um, ah, lovely. The next rank of psychers. These are known as primary psychers. Uh, these ones are ones that have good power, uh, good strength in their powers, good character, can resist demonic uh, possession, and will generally receive about five years of training in the Scholastia. Okay. And when doing so, they are kind of sent out, much like the Scola Progenia, to, or Progenia, to wherever they're deemed fit. The, the very young aspirants are often sent to a space marine chapter of sorts. Um. Others might enter the Imperial Guard, as Shy has shown here, as a Primaris Psyker, a uh, Battle cool. Psyker. Uh, cool and the, the very, very, very talented uh, will either become, in, will become Inquisitors, mm-hmm. or the extremely talented and young might get a chance to be sent to the Grey Knights. But of course, that's, you know, pretty rare. Oh boy, Grey Knights. So... Like when a psyker gets too old to be of use anymore, is it just inevitable that they get fed to the uh, emperor? Depends uh, on if they're too old to be of use uh, in that sense, or if they well, well, so okay, so that was like the the primary psychers, right? Mm-hmm. There is a second ranking of psychers, and those are trained oh. for service as astropaths. Uh, okay, so gotcha. All about communication. So there's a good yeah. chance that maybe. Um, you know, a Primaris battle psyker might get a bit old for combat and then be, uh, you know, an astropath or perhaps like an aide for a general. Yeah. Like something. if you, if you're a gray knight, chances are it's like, oh yeah, I'm ready to retire. And it's like, no, you're going to be a snack. It's like, well, you've been a gray knight this whole time. We're probably not going to feed you to the emperor. Well, gray knights don't retire. They're space Marines. They. They fight until they die or they go into a dreadnought. <laughs> That's true. I guess I guess space marines don't retire. They just, you know, either die. Yeah, like you said, die or go into a dreadnought. Then, yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, and then also, uh, it also depends on just what your school of psychic thought is. Um, this, this is actually the next topic, which is the schools of psychic power. Um, and it's actually we, really, you are Tokyo drifting with these Dean Caymans today. I, I'm doing all right. Shai's yeah. helping a bit. Yeah, um, you guys are just... Mm. Now, you might notice some of these because these are actually different schools of psychic powers that you can utilize in the Rogue Trader game. Um, oh! They did, a, they did a very good job with that. God, uh, I need to play that. I can't. I don't know why. I just... When it came out, I was just like... I played it for a little bit, but I wasn't as hype as I was uh, when I played the, the demo. I think Baldur's Gate 3 corrupted me. I, I, think, I think it's the fact that it, once you, like once like the the opening area is over like the sun part um mm-hmm. the game's pacing just falls off a cliff and it then it, it's just like where do i go i don't know let's try this area oh my god here's a ship battle and these ship battles kind of suck and yeah and, and then it's a whole thing but anyway. i actually haven't gotten into any ship battles yet <laughs> they're they're not great oh okay good 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 to know um but anyway i i, I, haven't, I haven't finished the game so i, I can't really you know mm-hmm. but yeah. anywho um, there are five specific psychic disciplines that you can choose from. There's biomancy, divination, pyromancy, telekinesis, and telepathy. Hmm, what does that pyromancy entail, I wonder, I wonder. I mean, you know, you say pyromancy, but like pretty much all of these 
are easily understood biomancy <laughs> telekinesis. True, true, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, depending on what use you might be to a certain, you know, group, all of these different powers have their own use. Like Shy mentioned, sure. biomancy can, like, heal your body and heal wounds, but it can also just extend, extend your, life. your life. Yeah, I wouldn't want biomancy. I would just want to, like, be able to just... Hey, look, oh, <coughs> oh, I got a little bit of a sore throat. Blip. Oh, hey, I'm good. You know, like, that's 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 dope. That's the hey, one I'd want. It's actually kind of unfortunate how limited psychers uh, are used in various aspects of like the tabletop and stuff, because for the most part, depending on how good you are skilled in certain aspects, you can do crazy stuff like, you know, you oh, might yeah. have like an Imperial Guard um, Primaris Psyker. And then two of your friends get like shot in the chest and you just go like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you heal their <laughs> wounds and they're back in the fight. And like, that's crazy. You know, is that the sound they make? <laughs> Man- <laughs> mango on a fork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, yo, that mini is dope. That mini is so cool. Yeah. Her, I, I don't like her egg head, but I agree. I like the, the, the little, uh, the hood, yeah, I, I guess that's a hood. It's With like a, a little it's like a hood, yeah. Sure, yeah, that's cool. The egg head is a little weird. Like she's got your forehead. I mean, she her forehead extends to the back of her damn head. Yeah, I, wow, it's I, literally I, called yeah. a psyker hood, huh? Yeah, it's not really a hood because it doesn't really. It's more like a yeah, sure, whatever. It's fine. Point being, yeah, it's a hood. It's a it's a hood. Yeah, it's a cool mini, regardless. But uh, for example, um, there is like smite. Smite, we're all familiar with. It's bolts of lightning, but it's <laughs> it's not actually lightning. It's like bio lightning. Yeah, it's like psychic bio lightning. It's not actually coming from the heavens. It's not coming from like you know cloud formations or whatever. It's yeah, yeah. So biomancy is all like body stuff. You know, enfeeble has you sap energy from your opponents, or iron mm-hmm. arm turns your flesh into living metal, so you. Turn into that X Men guy who turns his body into metal and just kind of walks into fire. You know, Colossus, like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Colossus. Yeah, yeah. Biomancy's cool. I like Biomancy. Um, yeah, Biomancy's fun. That's a fun one. Um, though, if you are like that prior example I gave you, let's say you're a psyker in the guard and you get a bit old, maybe you'll serve as an aid for a general. Be pretty good to have divination. Oh yes, it would. That would be great if you were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like like prescience, precognition, you know, kind of knowing the <laughs> kind future. Kind of important, yeah, yeah. Foreboding. This is a, a big one that I believe um, Adira in Rogue Trader. So they've got the binoculars because they they far see, eh? God damn you! I had to do it. I'm very sorry. It's I'm I'm obligated. It's fine. Um, <laughs> there are also fun ones like uh like perfect timing is kind of fun. It's a uh, oh. Uh, like images down to the, the the nano or like the micro or nanosecond of an enemy, so wow. you know exactly when the uh, someone's going to pop their head out behind cover, and then you can just blast them. Ooh, that that I was gonna say that almost seems unfair, but it's forty k. There's tons of powers just like that on either side of the coin. There's a particularly good one called Scryer's Gaze, which lets you basically just it's almost like looking at a downward map of the whole battlefield. And you can Ooh. just, like, see everything and be like, all right, move forces here, move stuff here, you know? Oh, wow. So that is a super important psyker that they can see the whole battlefield and where everything is. That is invaluable. But, of course, it comes <laughs> with its share of caveats, which is, one, how reliable is it? Most of the time, yes. But, you know, seeing the future is always... You know, a double-sided coin because how you adjust the future might make the future come true, and yeah, uh, uh, you know. The usual well, yeah, type that of was thing. that was the emperor's big thing in uh, the Master of Mankind, right? Why he had to do what he did because you know, who knows? Like, I I can't just you know see the future, and well, how am I going to enact it? How many troops is it going to take? Am I going to make things worse? You know, I'm not just gonna yeah. Yeah. Plus, like, there's one there's a difference between knowing when someone's going to pop their head out of cover and. You know, what if the what if the enemy has a psyker? 
Oh, you know? and they're kind of like messing with the feed and making you see stuff that isn't even. Can they do that? Can like two psychers screw with each other to the point where it's like, oh, I know that he's got the binoculars, so I'm going to use my weird psycherness to to make everything look funky, wonky, and not how it actually is. Depends on how powerful the psyker is. Maybe if a, if a psyker is like focusing down a chaos force, like an imperial psyker, and then he's like looking with binoculars and he looks at like a chaos space marine sorcerer and his head just like explodes. Well, that, I meant like I, I was using the far seer. Joke. I know what you were doing, but I was, I, I was, I was you know. But like two psychers clashing could make it so that the, the one psyker that's looking at the whole battlefield isn't seeing things properly. That's a possibility. It, it depends. Or, or maybe they're also looking at the battlefield and they might make tactical changes against ah, your changes. Gotcha. So you can never really fully trust what that psyker is seeing. You can never fully trust the future. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's a lot it's easier cool. when you have a when you have one that's called that's a pyromancy psyker who's just like <laughs> flame breath. <laughs> yeah, flame on. And just, you know, my hands are flamethrowers, guys. This is this is a fun there's a fun one here called Sunburst. The Psyker <laughs> sings a wild song whose notes were old when the universe was young. As they do so, an incandescent aura appears around them, growing ever brighter and hotter with every refrain. Only when the song is ended does the aura explode, discharging its pent up fury in a blinding supernova flash. Wow, that's cool. So they just turn themselves into a localized supernova. Just imagine, like, we finally captured an, uh, an enemy combatant, and he just blows the jail cell apart with a <laughs> supernova. All you hear is him singing in there, and it's like, what is that? Ah! And Like, uh, telekinesis is extremely obvious, yeah, um, yep. but how it's used is interesting. Like, the bees is telekinesis. Oh, yeah, um, I guess the bees would be telekinesis, wouldn't it? Yeah, throwing stuff. Because you're um, moving it with, yeah. But then there's like Gate of Infinity, which is a fun one. Uh, the Grey Knights can use this. It lets them basically just step into the uh, like a portal into another area of the battlefield. Oh, okay. So kind of not exactly what the lion does when he goes into the forest, but kind of similar. A faster version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't actually have to go through the forest. They just, hey, look, portal. Blah, blah. That's yeah. a great image, Shy. I don't get it. It's like the woe upon ye meme. It's a sale. It's him throwing bees. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, it's fine. Um, crush. You, you crazy kids. Crush is a power. It's literally just like creating a, a telekinetic force around a person and then. And smushing them. Into powder, basically. Yeah. Hey, yeesh. That um, is. Owie. And then, of course, you have telepathy, which is, you know, mind control. And. Mm-hmm reading people's minds and causing them to have hallucinations, terrify, dominate, puppet master, all the usual things you'd expect. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, you know how what they're suited for, the psyker can be put in different areas. The Grey Knight psychers, of course, are insane. Um, but <laughs> no, us- Grey Knight's insane? Surely not. Surely. Surely um, not. Their powers are absolutely ridiculous, but then, like, you know, some Inquisitors have crazy strong psychic power, too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they use it in a much more precise way. <laughs> They're not sunbursting all over the place? Normally not. Um, but also, you know, <laughs> in a sense, these are, it's weird. It's like these are sorcerers and wizards at the same time. Um. Mm-hmm. Because this is a genetic gift to them, like a sorcerer, but you still need to, like, practice biomancy. Really? You need, like, well, I mean, I guess with anything, you need to practice it, like, yeah, you know, like use it or lose it. Well, that, and, like, you know, you might just be bad at it. You know, it's like, I'm, don't worry, <laughs> don't worry, DK, I'm going to make you way younger. And then I just, like, <laughs> put your, my, your head into your foot. Oh no, the bone juice. Yeah, and it's it's like break all of your limbs at one time. And it's like, ah, crap, damn it, I should have studied. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's, I I imagine you're not going to make it very far far in biomancy school if it's like, don't worry, I'll heal you. Oops, I broke all your bones. I don't think you're going to get a passing grant. I think you're going to get fed to the emperor real quick. Yeah, or, you know, it's like, go carry that 
mug of coffee from over there to me without spilling a drop. And so you reach over and you like blow a hole in the wall accidentally. <laughs> and you're like, well, you're in the wrong F. school. <laughs> Fail. You need to go over to the destructor school where you just go into combat. Well, that that's uh, uh. You, yeah. When 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 you accidentally blow a hole in a wall instead of carrying the coffee, then it's like you know what? We were gonna have you carry sensitive like bombs and explosives and stuff, but you know what? Nah. Let's let's put you somewhere else. It's it's um. What it, well, it's not just that. But it, that that's they not even put them anywhere. It's probably just feed them because they're gonna like sneeze during the battlefield and like. <laughs> Blow up 14 <laughs> guardsmen. <laughs> the sneeze so, and they just sunburst. Yeah, that's that's the problem is that this is why it's so unstable. Or oh, fuck, you're gonna make me sunburst. He's gonna he's gonna like diarrhea shit and then and then just like a Nurgle <laughs> demon comes out of his ass and is like, oh, oh my no. god. Maybe, oh, oh no, like, like flubber. <laughs> Truly, truly, you have been corrupted by chaos. Yeah, so, you know, you can't just, like, throw them out there. You gotta train them. Also, please, for the love of God, listeners, do not make that art. I know we ask for art. Do not D- DK is, turn. Don't do it. DK is using reverse psychology. He wants to see a nurgling I don't want to. Why would anybody want to see that? Why would anybody want to see a psyker shit out flubber? Oh, shit. What's that meme of, like, the two hands? <laughs> Like, no, like no hands in the hole. Anyway, we've gone a little off topic. What what's next, Brick? Uh, well, I mean, there's the assignment, which is basically just um, you know lists of psionic levels for different psychers. Um, <coughs> mm-hmm. This <coughs> is like, uh, well, like like for example, if you are an Omega class, that makes you a, a blank. But oh, past that, like. Omega is is you know negative seven, but then there's psi, chi, phi, epsilon, tau, sigma, rho, pi, omicron, z, nu, <coughs> ma, lambda, kappa, iota, theta, eta, zeta, epsilon, delta, gamma, beta, alpha, alpha plus, beta plus, gamma plus, delta plus, epsilon plus, zeta plus, eta plus, all the way to omega plus. Oh wow! All right, cool. Cool. This is why so I always all think that- of the letters in the Greek alphabet. Yeah, that's why I always think it's dumb when guys refer to themselves as alphas. Like, I've been like an epsilon for a while now. Like, I'm so much above them. <laughs> Look how low Sigma is. It's so low. It's so low. Come on, guys. Yeah. You gotta... They, gotta, they gotta step it up. Yeah, you gotta at least get the Tau. Yeah, I'm a Kappa. Yeah, totally, totally. S- Sigma. Psionically dense individuals who are oblivious to warp fluctuations and manifestations of <laughs> psychic talents. Let's go! <laughs> so you definitely don't want to be a Sigma male even, in, even in 40, 40K. Even 40K is calling you a chump. <laughs> <laughs> so, even 40K is calling you a chump. <laughs> so uh, Omega all the way to Sigma are are basically like Omega's blanks and the rest are variations of blanks. Mm-hmm. Um, Rho is a regular human. Zero common human gotcha. being. Yeah. Um, up that is uh, there's P or Pi. Um, mm-hmm. This is the, the like very light. They just they just like they're very lucky. This is like like some good luck, ah, you know, kind gotcha. of thing. They don't manifest it. It's just like, ooh, hey. Double heads. Yeah. Uh, Omicron to Kappa, uh, two through seven, are people who unconsciously have it and don't really realize it. Okay. Um, a bit more than just good luck. Um, Iota through Eta are generally able to, are able to control their abilities. Um, these are these are true psychers. They know what they are. They realize with their power. Okay. Um, and then Zeta and Epsilon are very powerful. Delta through Alpha are like. One masterful per, one per one billion births wow um beta, i guess that makes sense because they're master right and then everything past that is just other strengths and high level powers um, right okay like zeta plus is the highest you could possibly be as a psyker where human living tissue can sustain your power everything plus this requires some kind of of structure or device to keep you alive. Oh, okay. So really the highest you're going to go is Zeta, and then you need some sort of helping hand to go above that. 
I imagine Zeta is like the grandmaster of the Grey Knights, and then mm-hmm. everything past that is a type of psyker, like I don't know, maybe the some Emperor. Sure, like 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 a wraith construct of the Eldar that needs to keep it yeah. alive, you know. Yeah. Okay. Or you need like the psychic chair in a you know the fancy uh, yeah command thrones. Or like the Eldar, you need your dead brother. <laughs> or your dead brother. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, for the most part, then it's just speaking of Eldar. Ooh, we're on the thing. Uh, let's talk about other spe- uh, species. Psychers. Okay. Damn, we are deja vuing with these Dean Caymans. We are moving. So for, hu- for humans, of course, we have travel and communication, the Imperial Guard, the Inquisition, Space Marines, and so on. Um, for chaos, the they <laughs> are much happier with using psychers. Shocking. So Traitor Guard or the Lost and the Damned have rogue psychers known as Mind Witches. Mind Witches, yep. Okay. Cool, and then cool. Chaos Space Whoa. Marines, of course, they have sorcerers. Zeech, of course, of course is a the big thousands. fan. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Korn does not. Uh, uh, obviously, he hates psychers, but other unaligned entities do use psychic mm-hmm. powers, like Bellacor. Yep. Also, can I ask what 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 is that picture Shy posted? Is that a is that a Necron in that yeah, thing? He's doing weird sorcery against the Necron and bending his ass. Damn. Yeah. Good old Araman. Yeah, good old Araman. Doing doing stuff, making people into dust, doing stuff, making dust, you know. Making as dust. he does. Yep. Um, making the whole a, fleet dust, yeah. Of course there's Eldar. Eldar are all are all psychers. They're all genetically psychers. Yep. Um yep. but certain of them have uh more power and use of their powers, like the those who use the path of the seer. Can become warlocks. Uh, there are far seers, of course. Joke with aside. the binoculars. God yep. damn it. Um, some <laughs> are some are subtle. Some are very much not subtle. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Yeah, it all depends on on which you know what the path they take. Um, mm-hmm. Dark Eldar are actually yeah. psychic as well because they're Eldar. Because they're Eldar, sure. But they they refuse the use. They've given up the use of psychic powers, despite using any kind of psychic object they sometimes use. Oh, real? I didn't I didn't know that. I, I I don't know if we've talked about that, but for some reason, I thought the Drukhar were just like, yeah, we will use our powers, but <laughs> we're going to f you up with them. I I didn't realize that they were just like, nope, 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 no, we're not using it. We got it, but we're not using it. I didn't I did not realize that. Because of the nature of Kamara as a city and the Dark Eldar's relationship with Slanesh, um, mm-hmm. utilizing psychic powers is a pretty good way for Slanesh to be like, what's up? I, hello? Ring, ring. Moshi, moshi. <laughs> and then just like snatches you immediately. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. Banana phone. phone. Yep. That's true. That's true. That would be a good reason for them to not use their um, psyker powers. Because like you said, it would just be like this big neon flashing buffet open sign for Slanesh to find them and just. Yeah, so psyker is in Kamarog of any kind are treated with outright hostility and often lots of fear. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine that psychers on Kamara are just outright killed or something like I, I would imagine they're not even going to risk it for the biscuit like just <laughs> and since they're the Drukari they probably don't care about just mercilessly killing someone just for scaring them a little the only people that sometimes show up in Kamara that's a psyker would be like other Eldar or, or Harlequins that um, mm. are working with them but yeah. yeah they don't they don't much like them yeah not not surprising yeah that makes um, sense Tau obviously have no psychers, but they do have some psychers that are uh, like auxiliary, like the psychic owl bear that we desperately don't have. <laughs> we need the owl bear. Come on. Uh, has has a psyker human ever joined ranks with the Tau? Because they do have. Um, what What's the name of humans oh, that join the, the Tau? The Guavesa. Yeah, the Guavesa. Are, have any psychers been Guavesa before and just joined the Tau and use their psychic powers to help them? That is a fan fascinating question that I do not have an answer to. Okay. It's not one that we readily know of. No. If anything, I okay. feel like the, the Tau would kill him. 
because that's a huge threat. But because they're I don't just know. weird, yeah. Um, Necrons obviously do not have psychers, but they do have <laughs> a lot of anti-psychic stuff because uh, the warp is a huge threat to them. Mm-hmm. Sure, because they sure. have nothing to fight it against. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyranids have tons of psychers. <laughs> the shadow in uh, the warp, right? That shadow in the warp, the the hive mind in its own right uses its mm-hmm. psychic power through tons and tons of bugs. Yep, yep, um, yep. Which is very powerful. Uh, very. And then, and then, of course, you have the uh, the gene stealer cults, which is part of Nids. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And the Voton actually do have a a psyker, the Grimnir, but they're uh, a much more safe and and stable, secure type of psyker. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and then last but not least, the most important one that I want to talk about are, of the course, wah! The, the orcs. Um, and this goes with what Shai was talking about earlier. So there, there's, so, okay, I, I have this part of the 40K lexicon here, and this is verbatim, um, okay. which, uh, which is orc psychers are unique in that, that they draw from their psychic power from other orcs instead of directly from the warp. A large mob of orcs huh. tend to generate what is known as a WA field, which is absorbed by the orc psychers known as the Weird Boys. They have little control over this, and too much of a buildup will likely explode the orc's head. Um, and so the Weird Boys avoid combat, most likely. Uh, but generally, the orcs, the idea is that enough of them will create the WA field, and that is where WA power comes from, which is why mm-hmm. more and more orcs, again, becomes more and more powerful. Huh. So, I guess I didn't realize that that's how weird boys worked. Like I knew that's how just Watt in general worked. Like the more orcs you have, the stronger the belief. We all believe something because there's 20 billion of us. Well, it works. I guess I didn't realize that's. It makes sense. That's how the weird boys would work too. Well, it's per- it's particularly weird because this does create like a bit of a question, which is, can you garner power? from other individuals and and create your own like localized warp space because if orcs do this with the wa field then there's the possibility that the sisters faith is what is like bouncing between all of them together oh and that's why they're less affected by the blackstone oh okay Okay, so if you got a bunch of sisters together and they all had the faith and they all had strong faith it would I don't want to say it would be like an orc wafield, field, but it's sort of the same principle. That that's the so this little excerpt I read does specifically say needs citation. Um, gotcha. Be, because I'm not the, the for our listeners the 40k lexicanum is uh, basically an area that's pretty much entirely uh, referenced from other sources like books and stuff. So it is very much you know. Um, factual where the wiki can sometimes lie mm-hmm. uh th- this is this is 100 percent like this is supposed to be all canon um right. but this one does need citation and that's what okay. we were talking about earlier was maybe games workshop is is making a bit of a retcon where there is taking power from the warp like psychers and stuff but you can have a real space ability of gestalt consciousness and stuff like the orc wa okay uh shy said also uh orcs now gain power via the great green which is a spiritual soul reel of orc fungi and gork and mork don't exist in the warp but in the great green instead right which which is again needs citation um ah. But the idea that like Gork and Mork do not exist in the Warp, war, but they are their own separate kind of thing, hmm. kind of like it, it's it's interesting. I we, we yeah, there was the Gaskell Thraka thing yeah, about I, the Great I, Green. Yeah, I I remember the Great Green thing, but I guess it didn't hit me that it was like their own little mm, pseudo warp only for the orcs. Well, my, my issue with it is that it's it's got unreliable narrator. Yeah, on, that too. It's yeah, you know, because they they talk about like there's the souls are reborn from the great green, but that's said by isn't it Makari? Yeah, it's who, Makari. He might just not understand the warp. Right. Like I I would never expect Makari to say the words the warp or the Imperium. I assume yeah. when he says the great green, he, he means just meant the warp. The warp. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I, I don't know. It's a bit of it's a bit of a tough one. Yeah. It, 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 I I always thought the Great Green was just the orcs version of the warp. Their phrase, yeah, like that's just what they called the warp. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm not sure. There's a bit because we still do have the issue of sisters' faith is working in the area where it shouldn't. Yeah. So puzzling. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a question. It is mm-hmm. a bit of a question. Um, you know, we, we can't, we can't speak about any of this with full certainty. Um, but it yeah. is true that orc stuff does work differently and weirdly. So it does. It does. The, the wa works in very mysterious, amusing ways. Right. So whether or not, uh, a, the orc wa is just the gestalt work of a ton of orcs in one localized area or whether they feed off each other, don't know. It's a little, yeah. it's a little weird, but you know, for for future books to to puzzle yeah. on, yeah, for future for future canon to be retconned. Last but not least, on today's uh, episode, I thought it'd be kind of fun if we talked about a couple psychic powers. Oh hell yeah, let's go! Let's talk about psychic powers more than we already have. So I mean. You know, like uh, in here we have a, a list of of powers. Um, if funny enough, even the uh, the sisters of battle have a list of psychic powers. Of course, of because course. they're not psychers, but it's just like the miracles they make. Yeah. Um. But uh, we have a whole bunch of space marine chapters as well. Would you Would you like to pick a random space marine chapter, and uh, perhaps I'll give you a power. Um, random space. Let's do some blood angels. Blood Let's do some angels. blangles. All right. Uh, well, we have blood boil, which <laughs> has the the foe's blood to boil and burst from every pore. Ouch! Ouchies! Oh, that that's very suiting for them, though. Makes it a lot easier to harvest. You know. Uh, uh sure. Um, let's see. We have uh, what is this? Um. Uh, most of these are, are relatively simple. There's like, oh, oh, Wings of Sanguinius, where oh, the nice. librarian will achieve flight thanks to two blood red wings of psychic energy emerging oh. from his back. Yo, that's so cool. That's so rad and edgy. Uh, there's Sanguine Sword which allows a librarian's force weapon to burn with a crimson red infused with his inner rage. Oh, nice. I thought they were literally going to make a sword out of blood. Out of, like, I mean, it turns red. Blood. It does. It turns red, but I thought it was going to be a literal, like, blood blade. Still very cool, though. Still uh, love it, but ooh. All right, give me another chapter. Uh, I would imagine I'm, I'm, I'm going to go salamanders just because I want to hear all the fire breathing that they do. All right. Fury of the Salamander. The librarian conjures the flame and the fury of his home world and the terrible lizards that dwell upon it. Uh, the roiling flames twist and writhe into the form of an ancient and powerful drake. Its malevolent visage inspiring dread. The man makes Whoa. a fire dragon and sends it at you. I was going to say they literally summon a fire dragon and just... <clears throat> Let's go! That's way cooler than just breathing fire. Uh, heat of the furnace. A searing heat of the forge runs through the veins of the salamander, and the librarian can turn the heat outwards, wreathing himself in flames that enemies cannot bear to be near, and which causes flesh to burn and blister at the touch. Ooh, okay. Flame shield always, always comes in handy. All right, uh, another, another chapter. Um, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm gonna be nice. Because I'm always mean to them. Let's let's hear about the Ultramarines. Oh shit! Uh, this is just not even on here. Um, <laughs> I, I guess it would just be the regular powers, I suppose. Oh, uh, that's true. I guess they're just yeah, the blue blue stuff. It's like <laughs> they, uh, they they refuse to do your taxes. I mean, it's what you think it is. It's Mental like, shock, my for, taxes. Oh. Well, that there, well, got, I got one of those. Um, fear of the darkness. Sheer terror overcomes the librarian's foes as their souls are pierced with the horror and death and truth of their insignificance in an uncaring universe. It's just existential <laughs> dread. <laughs> existential dread. Well, hey, there you go. That's that's not as cool as the other ones, but hey, you know, I'm 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 trying to help you out, Ultramarines. You know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. 
It, he actually just casts depression. <laughs> <laughs> he just hits you with the robooty. Uh, there's Veil of Time, which is the librarian steps out of phase with time, witnessing myriad potential futures and using that knowledge to alter the course of events in the future. That's cool. That's cool. Not as um, cool as the other ones, but still useful power. You know, you can't really, you know. I don't know. It's like Force Dome or like Null Zone, you know, yeah. Curse and Enemy Machine. That's boring. I'm going to go to the Carcaridons. Yeah, go. Oh, oh, that's a great choice. Yo, what about the Carcaridons? Oh, we've already we've already did this before. They, they literally summon like a shark and the shark bites you. Still very cool. The librarian Still calls cool. forth the avatar of a giant oceanic predator whose maw erupts from the very ground beneath the enemy to consume them in a shower of gore, uh, clawing them back, uh, retreating down, back down into the depths. Do uh, how about Chaos Space Marines? Are, is there any like really cool ones in there? Or are we just doing like Loyalist? Ooh, at the moment I only have Loyalist, but let me let me. Uh, okay, Chaos I was gonna say because like the Thousand Suns have got to have some wacky. Psyker powers, right? Oh, I got one. Okay, here we go. Uh, you want to do Zinch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zinch, Thousand Suns, whatever. So Zinch, uh, you've got like a uh, bolt of change, which is fine. Um, this boon of mutation, which a lot puts Ooh. his hand on a warrior marked for glory and um, channels him into his flesh mutates, enhanced by the warp. Mm -hmm. um, there's Infernal Gateway, which is just literally opening up a portal into the warp and sucking the enemies inside. Ooh, that's that's no moss. That's no moss. Uh, there was one called Treason of Zinch, which was just mind controlling your opponent, but I can't see uh, it. Okay. Okay. Um what else? Pink fire of Zinch turns him into warp eh, fire. Yeah, yeah. So it's some Nurgle one. I guess the chaos stuff would be pretty much just like, oh yeah, what are you the chaos god of? And it's just like, oh yeah, it's powers that are just kind of surrounding that. Like Nurgle's probably just like a lot of, ooh, you've got boils and diseases and oh, your head popped into a million ants or something, right? Or a okay, million this one's, frogs. Uh, or okay, this one's kind of fun. Stream of corruption. The psyker, the psyker's jaw opens inhumanly wide. Spewing <laughs> the mummy! Forth a stream of disease and noxious gas. Ugh. Yuck. Just, just bleh, pukes There's, out all that yuck at you. Yeah, it just kind of just literally pukes it all out. Ew. There's a... Uh, uh, acquiescence. The psyker, oh, boy. In, the psyker engulfs his enemies with a haze of broken dreams and unattainable goals, leaving them distracted and ripe for slaughter. That's so mesh. <laughs> That's messed up. Yeah, what the hell? It's just depression again. <laughs> yeah, I cast upon the depression. As if the 40th millennium wasn't depressing enough, I cast upon you further depression. Jesus! That was really funny, though. Yeah, what other Space Marine chapters would have, like, really cool what stuff? If, There's what something is, wait, we're what not... Is this? The Raptor chapter, a subsection of the Raven Garb. The Raptor's librarian can summon forth a swarm of shadowy birds of prey from the warp, which rise up from the ground, screaming for the blood of his enemies. Oh, this hell power yeah! Also have the effect of creating a brief cloud of darkness when the ethereal birds spring from the ground, and though not complete darkness, this foul vision and cast a shadow over the area as effect of thousands of black beating wings arch skyward. The, the man literally does like Batman smoke bomb, but with ravens. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go Raven. Ooh, what? Oh. Raven Guard probably have a lot of stuff like that where they just make crazy Raven things. Do you remember the Okay, we have to end this episode with a fan with a fantastic um a fantastic thing. Okay, 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 hit me. Do you remember the the lovely story of the the night of a thousand serpents, night of a thousand. Ser I don't. Okay, the uh, just for the viewers who maybe don't remember this, the Alpha Legion episode of the planet that had a whole bunch of psychers. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I remember that now. Gotcha. So, <laughs> so the Alpha Legion poisoned the water supply <laughs> of the planet with a hallucination and and caused all of the psychers yeah. to dream about snakes. <laughs> And, and it just started raining. It started raining snakes, and <laughs> and the planet was bit and, and and murdered by like 
billions of serpents. Of snakes, yeah. And it killed a massive majority of the population, which the Alpha Legion then swooped in and stole all the psychers. Yep, yep. That's more than a thousand. It was raining snakes. That's more than a thousand. It was so funny. That is pretty great, though. That's. I mean, hey, that's one way to do it. Alpha Legion, you know, efficient. Very. I mean, that. that's really, I mean, for the most part, that's kind of psychers. That's the that's the, the shit we got here. They're kooky crazy. What the hell? Snake, Snake is, rain? Is that actually, oh my god, is that actually a Yu-Gi-Oh card? It must I, be. I believe them. That's, that's what they saw on that planet, you know? That's what okay. the Alpha Legion did to them. All right, I got, I got one last one. Okay, one last one, let's hear it. Wave of penance. The librarian reaches into the uh, the ether and draws forth all the pain suffered by his ancestors in the self-imposed atonement of the pain glove and a hundred other such rituals. In an instant, 10,000 years of penance is unleashed upon his foes. Every iota of pain ever felt by the chapter turned back upon its foes in an unstoppable blast wave. Wow. Just, he just like takes all the, the imperial fists who ever like hurt themselves and uses <laughs> yeah. it as a as a wave against his opponent. Oh man. That's pretty great. I gotta say, that's pretty feel the pain of my ancestors. That's that's pretty cool, actually. That's hilarious. Uh, very fitting and very cool. Alright. Well fits like a glove, if you will. Anywho. Uh like a pain glove. Oh. Shy wants to add one last thing to the episode. Being a psyker <laughs> sucks ass. That is very true. Being Accurate. a psyker is awful. You're, <laughs> you don't want to be a psyker in 40k. <laughs> you you are constantly not in control of your of your mind or body. You are you are everybody hates you, everybody's fearful of you, nobody likes you, nobody wants to be around you. Yeah. And chances it, are you're gonna end up being a snick snack. Yep, it is. It's not a good time for anybody. <laughs> no, unless you're one of the rare ones that has some modicum of control. Some, a very light amount. <laughs> you so you want you want to take us home then? Yeah, I'll take us home. All, All right, right, everybody. Uh, remember, kids, study your biomancy so you don't turn <laughs> Aunt Gertrude inside out. All right, bye. <laughs>